What's up everybody, this is Dan from Pizza Handhelds, and today we're going to mod the original OG Game Boy DMG with the Bivert and Backlight mods. This method maintains the original look as it uses the original screen hardware and you get that nice pixelated dot matrix game look to your screen. I think this mod still holds up today because it maintains that original look and feel of the Game Boy DMG when compared to some of the IPS kits that are out there and it provides you with a more authentic playing experience. The point of this mod is to backlight the DMG screen. And to do so, you can place a panel in back of that screen in the original hardware. Now, when you only install this backlight, it turns up looking very faint in your system. And so that's where the Bivert chip comes into play. The point of the Bivert chip and the rotated polarizer is to increase the contrast of the screen. Community member Gekio has created a great outline for this mod, including a lot of the technical details of how the chip works. And as he explained in the outline of this mod, Biverting is fairly simple. We invert the LCD pixels once digitally and then once again optically. As a result, the pixels have the original intended colors just like without biverting, where black is black and light gray is light gray and so forth. Now this mod may sound useless at first, but since the second conversion is done optically, the screen contrast is improved, which is the point of this mod. Now I think anyone can complete this mod without any background experience. I encourage everyone to try it out to expand their skill set and just develop a cool hobby. However, with a bunch of the tutorials I've seen on YouTube, I think a lot of people greatly understate the difficulty of this mod. Now these screen units are a little bit over 20 years old and a lot of them can be very fragile and brittle and easy to break. Where a lot of the screens that you'll see have these horizontal or vertical blank lines within them. During my experience in doing this mod, I've broken, broken, and broken a bunch of these different screen units in the process. And it can be very frustrating as a lot of these screen units will go for about $30 plus on eBay if you want to replace them. So I also urge you to proceed with caution. I think the secret is to go slow, go at your own pace that you're comfortable with, and just never exert that much pressure onto the screen or any of these components, especially when removing the polarizer. As I think removing the polarizer is easily the hardest part of this mod. But I don't think you can really learn anything without going through those difficult situations yourself. And without further delay, let's go ahead and get started. First thing to do is let's buy a mod set. You'll need to make two separate purchases. One is the backlight kit and one is the Biver module. Retro Game Repair Shop sells the oldest version of this mod, but the resistors come separate and you'll need to solder the resistor to the backlight circuit and add some shrink wrap over that connection. While the Handheld Legend sells an upgraded version of this backlight kit where the two resistors are already integrated onto the backlight and you'll need to simply solder two joints into the circuit. The Biver chip between Handheld Legends and Retro Game Repair Shop is identical. Now to address a little bit of content controversy with these chips, both of the Bivert chips have a flaw. Again, referencing the Gekio write-up on this matter, the unused input pins on the chip itself are not grounded and are floating connections. This can result in unpredictable behavior based on the environment it's operating in. Now this is not saying or it's even likely that it's going to fail, but I have seen undesired results where these Bivert chips go bad in about 5 years or so and they need to be replaced. As a better alternative, I recommend the retro modding Bivert chip where it has these input voltage pins properly grounded where the behavior will be more stable in the lifetime of use. And let's get to installing this mod. So the first step, we're going to count down. We want to get the 6 and 7 pin from the left, desolder, and raise it, pull it up from the motherboard. And we can put the chip down as a placeholder to see which solder joints need to be trimmed. Trim those three joints as shown. And I kept losing track of which were the 6 and 7 pins, so I used a permanent marker. But if you can see, it's right in the center of three different pins, so it wasn't that helpful. Do what you want to do. Maybe I should use a finer marker. Skill issue. Carefully use a craft knife, pull up the pins from the motherboard while applying heat, uh, I found to be the most easiest way, as I'm really hit or miss with solder wick. I think it's kind of hard to use. Yeah, yeah, I know, skill issue. And gently pull up those pins, slide that Biver chip under those pins, and let's get to soldering. So these three holes align with those three joints where we trim the excess wire sticking out. And upon soldering the first joint, you want to make sure that the chip is properly aligned with the pins coming out of the motherboard before soldering the next joint. Or else you're in for a tougher time. Uh, so these are pretty easy joints to solder. You're just going to want a ton just sinking down in that hole. Easy peasy. Make sure they're looking good. Now we're going to go ahead and put some solder on the ground pad. Now we're going to solder the two pins from the motherboard to the Vibra chip. 
be careful not to put too much solder as it's going to short the two pins as what happened here. If you do, it's not a big deal, just use some solder wick or some solder flux to redirect the solder to make them discontinuous. Check for continuity, making sure there's no continuity between both of the pins. And now let's solder the ground to the ground of the motherboard. Dude, I was so stoked. Oh my gosh, that was so, at this point, this is one of the coolest feeling mods I've done so far. Now let's give a quick scrub down with IPA on a toothbrush. Now let's get to the hardest part, pulling up the polarizer and putting in the backlight. Now, everything you do with this piece, be very gentle. I found a razor blade to be nice to stick in between the glass screen and the polarizer in the back. It's kind of hard at first, but just go at your own pace. Don't force anything, you'll be fine. And at the start, you kind of have to pull pretty hard. You can see my hands just like shaking in there. But once you get a good portion of it off, it comes off really smooth and easy that I can see here. But be very careful when you're pulling that screen away from the motherboard. Uh, you don't want to damage any of those ribbon cables or anything. Now, booyah, we got that polarizer off. Well done. Let's go ahead and give it a test. See if we did it right. Gently place the backlight and the polarizer inside of the screen assembly as shown. Cable so long, trim those babies down so that we can solder them to the motherboard. Solder the positive and negative wires to the joints as shown here. And again, we don't have to solder a resistor because it's the handheld legend backlight, which is pretty nice. All right, we're working. As you can see, I didn't pull off the protectors of the backlight or polarizer at this part as I was trying to mock up everything to make, make sure that everything's functioning properly. Now cleaning, man, cleaning. You gotta clean this thing so long. This video doesn't even do any justice. I probably spent like 10 times the amount of recorded video I'm showing here about how long it took. I ended up using the razor blade to uh, scrape off the excess adhesive on the screen, which I thought worked pretty well. Keep wiping, keep applying IPA on the screen, because this is all going into the screen, and if there's any like smudges on the screen, it's always gonna bother you. Go slow, go to your own pace, and make sure you're happy with the clarity of the screen before moving on. And if you haven't noticed, when you place the backlight into the screen module, it didn't sit flush against the motherboard. And we're going to have to trim a portion of this little frame out to provide room for that hub coming out from the bottom. Go ahead and trim until you can fit that little hub at the bottom of the screen into the cutout. Carefully remove the protection from the screen once you're happy with where you are. Careful not to touch the surface of the backlight at all. applying some last finishing touches to the screen. And we're checking it again. We check constantly, making sure everything's functioning properly. And hey, and looky there, we got Link on a ship about to be awakened, but not so fast. Oh, dang, dude. At this point, I was so pissed. There are splotches and light bleed on my backlight. Not happy. I emailed Handheld Legend. They sent me a new one free of charge within two days. So I got this blue color going on. Everything seems to be working properly. We're ready to go. Once you're comfortable, the final step is removing the protective cover from the polarizer. You wanna make sure that you have the polarizer oriented to where it's a dark panel instead of the light panel. The dark panel ensures that you're getting that 90 degrees to where you're inverting those pixels a second time like we talked about in the start. Again, clean, clean, clean. I'm cleaning the screen protector here, making sure we got no dust, debris from anything. Go ahead and place the screws back onto the screen assembly and those wires just so they don't disrupt the buttons and the feel of the buttons we want to hide those so go ahead and get some tweezers and pull those into the back of the board they fit super nice let's put this baby back together and see how we did dmg has so many screws man there are so many screws so it's so frustrating you forget something you forget the power switch or the light bar or something and you're gonna have to take it like a thousand screws again man it's it's tough and nice it turns on it's working we're ready for final assembly let's throw those screws in throw the batteries in that battery cover 
And we are done, guys. Oh man, this looks so good. I love the blue backlight, the original pixels from the display. It looks so good and authentic and just how I remember it. And I hope you learned something in this tutorial today. Thanks for watching till the end, guys. And please like and subscribe, comment below. Let me know how your backlight and vibrant mod turned out. And yeah, we'll talk to you later. Have a nice day.